Let me just say that I cannot explain or express how great it feels to be back. How are all of you doing? I've been gone for a week and a half on a short break so I don't get completely burnt out and I stop making videos for you and I got a very special video for you because I was challenged and tagged by Mr. Adam Dolly of Almost Sideways to participate in the Killer Flick tag. Now if you guys don't know what that is, it was a tag that was started by Mr. Lee McCoy. If you don't know who he is, he's a great guy who loves horror, just like me, just like Zach Pope, and just like Mr. Cody Leach. He had created a tag to have everybody in the community participate and share some of their horror experience and horror knowledge. I'll put the tag down below and a link to Lee's channel so you can go check him out, which I highly recommend doing. But I figure there really isn't any more time for procrastination. I'm back and I want to answer these four 14 questions that come with this killer tag. So I'd say, let's just get started. I got them right here on my phone because I'm not a genius and I don't memorize things on the spot. I'm not Professor Charles Xavier. But question number one says, who is your favorite vampire character in a killer flick? Honestly, it's got to come back to Tom Cruise in Interview with a Vampire. Either that or, or Blade. Honestly, those two films have my two favorite performances as far as vampire characters are concerned. So there's question one. Question two says, what was the first killer flick that opened your eyes to the world of horror? Honestly, the answer is going to be different for everybody. But the first film that really turned me on into how good horror could be, it's got to be the right, the first Halloween movie. Not any other film in the Halloween series, just the first Halloween. With what they did during that whole time period, the fact that it was 70s, they had a lot of practical effects, what they did with Michael Myers, that was great. All right, question number three says... What is a standout setting for a horror movie? This is just my opinion where I think that as far as a horror movie is concerned, I don't care if it's the woods. I don't care if it's a town in the backyard. I just want a claustrophobic setting where you feel like you just can't get away from that that situation. My favorite settings would be for films like Don't Breathe, where it was just claustrophobic and set inside of a house to where they couldn't get away. Or in Evil Dead, it's a cabin in the middle of the woods. They can't get away. No matter what they do, either the road's flooded so they can't get back across, or this demon's chasing them throughout the entirety of the forest. No matter what the setting is, I just want it to be claustrophobic. I want it to feel like you can't get away, and I want it to just be feel like you are in that situation. All right, now question number four, which says, what killer flick are you embarrassed to say you love? I can't really say I'm embarrassed because I don't really feel embarrassed for any movies that I love. But what I will say is, I'm going to switch this around a little bit. Uh, I'm horror killer movie that I enjoy that I understand is a complete guilty pleasure for me has got to be Happy Death Day. That movie, I realize there is a ton wrong with it. I mean, the movie is very, very, it's semi well made, but for the most part, it's not. Jessica Roth gives a great performance in it, and I, I find the movie to be enjoyable. It is a enjoyable guilty pleasure for me, but I can't say I'm embarrassed that I watched it because I want to see it again. I want to watch it again. All right, number five. I was about to say six, but it is number five. All right, so number five is what is your favorite killer flick based on true events and how accurate do you think the flick is to those events? My favorite horror flick based on true events has got to be Silence of the Lambs. The situation in the film is less less based on the real events as opposed to the characters that are in it. Buffalo Bill and Hannibal Lecter were based off of a few different people. If I'm remembering correctly, these killers were based off of three particular people, or Buffalo Bill was, and that was... Ted Bundy, Gary Heidnick, and Ed Gein. More specifically on the Ed Gein thing, and it's actually really fascinating because once you dig into some of the history that is built up in these characters, it, it's not only extremely disturbing, but you realize how these particular men, these serial killers, these sick individuals have influenced horror over the course of time. All right, now... Finally, moving on to number six. Number six says, what director would you like to see direct a horror movie? This might be an unpopular answer for people. 
but I would love to see Steven Spielberg try to tackle a horror movie. I understand that Jaws was a horror movie, but if you ask me, Jaws, in my opinion, I find it to be more of a thriller. I don't find Jaws to be a horror movie, and the number one thing is because Jaws isn't a really a movie that scares me. It isn't a movie that terrifies me to my core, and it's just about a great white shark. So in my opinion, while Jaws is thrilling and very good, I don't think it is horror, but there are horror-like elements inside of it, and that's why I think Steven Spielberg should tackle a full-on horror movie, like an it, like a Nightmare on Elm Street, like a Friday the 13th, or like a Silence of the Lambs. I would like to see Steven Spielberg, even if he fails at it, I'd like to see him at least try. All right, number seven. Number seven is, what killer flick was the hardest to watch? Um, I, I don't know if it's because I'm desensitized or, or whatever you want to call it, but for the most part, I, I don't find horror movies particularly hard to watch. I find certain segments in horror movies hard to watch. I think the film that really grossed me out the most and the film that I had to look away for at least a couple of seconds was probably Don't Breathe. I'm not going to get into spoilers or anything, but the last 15-20 minutes of Don't Breathe was probably the grossest thing I've ever watched in my entire life. And... Uh, I mean, that's all I really have to say. I mean, Don't Breathe is a great movie. I've seen it three times, but it's one of those things where Don't Breathe out of anything, call it call it gore or, or what have you, Don't Breathe without a doubt from a psychological standpoint and definitely the last 15 to 20 minutes of what they showed on screen was the hardest thing for me to get through and to stomach. Now moving on to number eight. Number eight says, who is your favorite killer flick girl other than Jamie Lee Curtis? And I, I assume that's probably Jamie Lee Curtis from Halloween. Honestly, my favorite killer flick girl, it's gotta go back to Silence of the Lambs. My favorite killer flick girl was always Jane Foster as Clarice in Silence of the Lambs. The fact that she was going up against Buffalo Bill, she was going up against Hannibal Lecter, these powerful, powerful men, these great performances by these fantastic actors, and Jamie Lee Curtis was holding her own, it, it blows me away. All right, number nine says, what killer flick has scarred you for life? Now, this is kind of like the other question with what killer flick was the hardest to watch. When it comes to horror movies, I don't generally get scarred, and I, I don't generally stay terrified for too long. If a horror movie is really scary, I will, I will have a hard time getting to sleep for an hour more than I usually do. Then I just fall asleep, and the next morning I'm perfectly fine. But I gotta say that the film that really kept me up just thinking about it over and over again, a film that psychologically just made me think about certain situations, there's two here, that's the first Conjuring film, a and once again, Silence of the Lambs, you guys are gonna notice I'm gonna bring Silence of the Lambs up a lot here, because it is one of my all-time favorite horror films. But those two films, knowing that certain events that happened in both of these films, be it with Ed and Lorraine Warren, or the, or the situations with the girls, inside of that five foot pit that Buffalo Bill had them in, knowing that certain situations had happened in this very country and around the world, it's not only intriguing, it's sickening, and it, it's interesting to learn about in kind of a, in, in a sadistic sense, if that makes sense. All right, now moving on to number 10. Number 10 says, what killer flick has the most killer soundtrack? Yeah, you know, that's a good one. I was torn in my mind between two, but it's got to come down to the original Halloween. The original Halloween is a film that taught me that when it comes down to the bare bone of horror, if you want horror to not be scary, cover your ears, not your eyes, because the music, the ambiance, the tone that is in a horror movie, most of the terror is not from the gore or the blood or, or the violence that you see on screen. It's from the sound that accompanies it or the music that accompanies it. Now moving on to number 11. Number 11 says, what is the single greatest kill in a killer flick? It's gotta be the scene where Ash in the original Evil Dead film takes his girlfriend out when she's possessed and he whacks off her head with a shovel. All right, moving on to number 12. Number 12 says, what is the single greatest performance in a killer flick? Okay, are we even gonna be honest here? The single greatest performance in a killer flick for me personally, back to Silence of the Lambs. 
Anthony Hopkins as Hannibal Lecter. I mean, the guy won an Oscar for it, for goodness sakes, and he was on screen for only like 20 minutes. Hannibal Lecter, what Anthony Hopkins did as Hannibal Lecter, it's incredible. His interpretation, his mannerisms, how he portrays the character, how he goes about, how he holds himself as this psychotic lunatic cannibal. It's, and that last line, the last line of Silence of the Lambs that Hannibal Lecter gives, I'm meeting an old friend for dinner. It's ugh, one of the most bone chilling lines I think I've ever heard in any film. Anthony Hopkins reportedly by himself said he read the script for Silence of the Lambs over 200 times and it shows. All right, and we're reaching the end here, but now it's time for question 13. And question 13 says, is there a house in a killer flick that you would like to visit? Yeah, just for, just for the sake of trying to freak me out, I want to go see the Overlook Hotel from The Shining. I just want to spend one night there because reportedly the hotel itself is extremely haunted. I would like to just spend a night there, creep myself out, stay awake all night. I just want to see what would happen. Who knows? Maybe Jack Nicholson will come through the door and say, here's Johnny. All right, and now we're moving on to the final question. And it is, is there a horror killer movie villain that you sympathize with. It's gotta be the villains that came out from this past year. The Armitage family from Get Out. The Armitage family, yes, they are disgusting, horrendous people. They are great villains inside of this, this really, really Shining-esque horror movie. These characters are insane. And here's why I say I sympathize with them. Because at some point, all of us want to be better. All of us want to change our genetic makeup. All of us want to be improving continuously and want to be the best versions of ourselves as we can be. And while the Armitage family went about it definitely in the wrong way, they just want to improve. They want to be better. They want to be on top. They want to be the greatest. The Armitage family is the villains that I sympathize with the most. And that's it. That is the t killer tag, guys. First of all, thank you so much for, to Lee for creating this wonderful, wonderful tag. This has been a great experience explaining some of the stuff I love about horror. And Adam, thank you for tagging me in your video, in your killer flick tag, and inviting me to participate. This is a great community experience. And now, before before we wrap up this video, now it's my responsibility to tag four YouTubers to participate in this tag if they're gonna rise up to the challenge. First up, I gotta tag Miss Perry Nemiroff. Perry, I don't know if you're watching this, but if you are, I tag you. What are your answers to these 14 killer flick questions? You've got a world of horror movie knowledge, and I would love to see what your answers are. Will you rise to the challenge? Next up, Miss Brianne Chandler. Miss movies, I don't know if you're really that big into horror. As far as I know, I don't think you are, but I'm pretty sure that you've seen at least some horror. So if you can come up with some answers, that would be great. But Miss Movies, Brian Chandler, I tag you next. Next up, you're a little party in Arizona. You competed in the Schmodown, and I know you are giant movie fans. Late to the party, I challenge you to do a killer flick tag. You guys, you guys have a world of knowledge. You inspire me to be better on a continuous basis, to broaden my movie knowledge, to go out there, compete in the Schmodown, late to the party, everybody on your crew, everybody who does videos on your channel, I challenge you to do a killer flick tag. All right, and finally, Casey from Is This Good Content and the supposed expert from Australia, Casey, I don't know how many horror movies you have watched, but I challenge you to do a killer flick tag. And everybody who I have tagged, you guys, all of you, you inspire me to be better each and every time I put up this camera. I want to thank everybody, particularly Adam and Lee, for making this tag, for giving me the opportunity to share this, to tag the individuals here. I love each and every single one of you. Thank you all of you for show up. And as always, it is what you say that matters. So what do you think of this killer flick tag and what are your answers to these 14 questions whatever the, your answers may be leave them down below so we can get a conversation started and if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more click right there and subscribe and become part of the fray of nerds who love cinema you all have a fantastic day